the week before FTX crashed. And we didn't even bat an eye when that happened. And frankly, there's a lot of projects from other ecosystems coming to Solana. I know that firsthand because, you know, our dev shop is, is doing a lot of those portings from other ecosystems to Solana. Today, I'm joined by Jeff of WBA, who's no stranger to the channel. He's been here multiple times. In fact, back in March 2023, when Solana was trading at $20 and everybody gave up on the whole entire ecosystem, he was here telling us not to panic. And in fact, he doubled down uh, through his uh, cohort. Uh, Jeff, welcome back to the show. Thanks. I appreciate it. Always good to connect, my friend. Uh, good to see you. Sorry, it's been a minute. You always see things ahead of its time. You know, like I said, back in you know, a year ago, over a year ago, you knew what was coming before anybody else did. And all of a sudden it was a surprise to everybody, but for you, it was old news because you knew what was happening on the development side. And they always say, follow the developers. And so that's why I have you on here to tell us from a development perspective, what's new, what's happening in Solana, what can we expect here in the next you know, year or so? So let's start with the overall picture uh, you know, over the course of the last, you know, six months or so, what has changed in the Solana ecosystem? So, I mean, the, the reason I was so bullish when we first came over um, and, you know, frankly, we actually signed to, you know, do what we do over here um, the week before FTX crashed. And we didn't even bat an eye when that happened. So, you know, what's changed is what's rolled out, but what's the same is the culture and the community and the focus on the technology for the long term that drew us to Solana. You know, we really wanted to be in a place that we felt like we could set up a home and live for a long time. We didn't want to, you know, kind of be that renegade going chain to chain, trying to get a little bit of money here and there just to stand up an institute and then move on to the next. That's just not how we're wired. None of us wanted to do that. Um, and so, you know, we wanted to pick a place, you know, and set down some roots. And so we needed a community and a culture that fit us. Um, and, you know, we're believers. We're, we're people that believe that this is going to be world changing technology and way of life. And, you know, um, that this is going to be a place in a way that people interact. And um, we, we believe then and we believe stronger every day that Solana is the place. And, you know, you ask why, um, you know, really smart people are here. Um, and really smart people who care about this community and the hard times have galvanized the people here. Yeah, there's there's healthy competition. Yeah, not everybody loves each other. Um, there's some groups that, you know, there's some volatility and confrontation. But by and large, everybody has this conviction for Solana as a place for a certain part of the blockchain future, um, you know, being you know, important and impactful. So, um, you know, that's what drew us. That's what keeps things moving forward. Um, and we're seeing things coming out. Um, you know, people from other environments always like to say, well, you know, it's centralized because the hardware is expensive. Well, no, I mean, there's 3000 nodes and the Nakamoto coefficient is the best in blockchain. You know, you could, everyone could de define what centralization or decentralization is on, in their own definition. We feel really good about the decentralization of Solana now and the fact that with um, another new client with Fire Dancer coming out, which I can talk about in a minute, um, you know, the more clients that are out there, the more people are using SVM. Again, another topic, I was just in a chat with a group of people talking about SVMs. When I say SVMs, I mean um, off main net integration or implementations of SVM for other environments and other use cases. Um, and and just, to, just to kind of like... Um, add a little bit more context, SVM is Solana Virtual yes. Machine, is that correct? Yeah. The same way we have EVM, which is Ethereum Virtual Machine and all the EVM compatible yeah. chains, you have something similar in SVM, which is Solana. Yeah, and I mean, I would caveat that with, um, it's very important that people who are not on Solana understand that the the rolling out of, you know, what are essentially L2 SVMs and SVM rollups is not for the same reason that say EVM has them. EVM has them for scaling and trying to solve problems with performance and scalability. And that's where all of that came from. The use of the SVM in these different environments is more to have uh, more fine-grained control over some uh, specific use cases, to be able to have 
um, permissioned environments to have, uh, you know, a roll up that is gaming specific. So you can tune that SDM specific to your use case, not because Solana has any performance or cost efficiency problems. It's we can take this technology and use it to to have an environment somewhere else that is more specific. Maybe it's an enterprise use case or what have you. The other thing that's very different about the term SVM versus something like EVM is EVM is a very defined box with the, everyone knows what those pieces in the EVM are. The SVM is not, um, you know, when I talk about the SVM um, and this is just me, this is, you know, because I work with that technology, I think everything from the bottom of the, um, you know, the program layer programs on Solana or smart contracts, uh, bottom of the program layer to the metal, is SVM. It's 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 just everything that makes Solana run. Um, some people would say it's only what's called the TPU, the transaction processing unit. Some people would say no, you would need the TPU and the TVU, which is the transaction validating unit. Some people say you also need Turbine, which is the propagation machine. Some people you say you also need you know um, Cloudbreak, which is you know. Um, funneling uh, content to the database. Some people think you need the database in there too. So, I mean, there's a lot of different interpretations. Um, and, you know, part of the reason that there's so much energy in this is that they're all really great pieces and decoupling and um, maybe legoing them together for different use cases is really central to the ethos of the Solana ecosystem of, you know, let's iterate on good stuff and try to make something new that's really excellent for a specific use case. So uh, I want to take a uh, real quick, Jeff, I want to take a step <laughs> back because the, the narratives, when you look at the narratives on Solana right now, and you know, if you just look at on-chain activity, you can even argue that, look, pomp.fun, that application alone has generated more fees than Ethereum as a whole, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of great news coming out of Solana, but you know, what are your thoughts on the fact that it's a lot of it is primarily around meme coins in that narrative? Like, so it doesn't necessarily help the developer on Solana, though, right? Like, I, I know that Deepin is another narrative that's really big within the, the Solana ecosystem. You've shared with me a lot of tools coming out for, for the gamers. But how come we haven't seen that? All we're seeing right now is the meme side. Well, I mean, it also depends on where you're looking. Uh, um, I would say this, you know, there's a group called Magic Block that just put out um, tooling where, um, you know, you're going to be able to play on-chain games with real time, um, you know, real game experience, you know, 20, you know, 20 gunshots in, in, in 20 milliseconds, you know, kind of thing. Um, that is, that is all coming. Some of that game stuff just takes a little bit longer to develop. I mean, games take a long time. But that, you know, I would encourage people to look at Magic Block and what they're doing, because that is changing the face of gaming on chain. Um, and, you know, look, the, the public optics, especially on crypto Twitter and stuff like that, it's going to always be about stuff that's that's money centric, uh, that's investor centric. That's what gets people fired up and talking. They talk about price action and meme coins and all that. And, you know, I, where I am, meme coins are 5 percent of what I see on a daily basis. You know, D-Pin is a much bigger, um, you know, innovation, it, you know, and, and for anybody that's like, well, D-Pin, I mean, Helium Network is making an impact in the cellular services world, not just on in Web3, but I mean, people are using Helium 20 bucks a month. And then if you set up your own hotspot, you can actually get cellular service and, and Internet for free because you're earning and that's happening. I mean, people are using this all over the world. It seems like every other day there's another city that says we have Helium uh, service and the service is akin to the T-Mobile service because they use their towers. I'm pretty sure they use their towers. I know they have some relationship there. But so, I mean, Deepin's big. Um, you know, Hive Mapper is another one that is basically Google Maps um, where people can earn by helping map the world and keep track of traffic and, and things like that. These are real world use cases that are on Solana right now that people are using globally. So, you know, but they're not as sexy as, you know, my meme coin just pumped a thousand X and I made all this money or my meme coin rugged. And, you know, it's not as dramatic. So you don't hear about it as much. It's like you turn on the regular news at night on television. You're not going to hear good news. You're going to hear crappy news. You're going to hear dramatic news that is emotionally 
polarizing to one end of the needle spectrum or another. You're not going to hear, you know, Johnny got straight A's and came up with a solution for some problem in a science class. You don't get that. Now, is Johnny making any less impact than, you know, the, you know, the cat that got rescued out of the, the, the verdict building? Of course he is. But people don't care about that. People want to see the exciting adventure that distracts them from their lives. So, look, meme coins are big and they are impactful. And anybody that says that they're, you know, fake or whatever, um, go to a card collection conference and tell me how busy and how wild and fanatical people who trade Pokemon cards or magic cards or sports trading cards. That's what memes are. You know, meme coins are, are, are these trading, they're tradables that have a value and people are playing and having fun trading them. And that's what people are investing in. It's like gambling. It is like gambling. You know, I, I had a friend who said to me, you know, don't go into gambling like you're trying to win money. Whatever it costs you to go play craps at a table on a casino boat, um, that's you're paying for the entertainment. People are paying for the entertainment. And if they make a couple bucks off it, great. That's how I feel about the meme coin thing. Yeah, it gets a lot of the optics because it is... You know, it's going to get viewers more than, you know, Magic Block is going to make your latency for playing your game better. In, in a lot of ways, it's the environment that made it so, so that meme coins could thrive, right? You've got low transaction feeds, uh, fast speed. So for retail users, that's that's amazing. Uh, what are some of the tools that are coming out on Solana? And then also to follow up with that. What narratives do you think would benefit most from those tools? So, I mean, look, the every passing day, better developer tooling is coming out. Um, you know, Ethereum has Foundry, which is this kind of one-stop shop for developer tooling that really makes their lives better. And one of the things that a lot of us and Solana Foundation is, is really helping uh, is, you know, trying to um, aggregate all the best tooling into a into a, a kind of a, a suite like that. So that is something that's happening now that's being worked on. Um, you know, the aforementioned um, SVM. I, I was just in a, a chat before we got on a call where there's close to 200 people in this chat all working on, you know, permission environments, permissionless environments, roll-ups, you know, use case specific roll-ups, enterprise roll-ups, gaming roll-ups, et cetera. And again, just to try to take the power of Solana's technology and iterate on it and, tr and, and work to find a good product market fit um, to serve a bit, uh, another you know, pocket of the community and give a good user experience with fast transactions, inexpensive transactions, and a, a user experience with that type of product that is unparalleled. So this is, this is big, this is coming. And then Fire Dancer is coming. And if you haven't heard about Fire Dancer, Fire Dancer is being built by the team at Jump. Um, you know, your best, the best, um, you know, high frequency trading technology builders on the planet have rebuilt the um, Solana validator purely in C to be more performant, but also to give us, um, depends on who you ask, a second or a third client. Um, and that's going to make a huge difference. It's going to make the ecosystem faster, more robust, more stable. Um, it is um, probably going to bring in more C developers who, who are going to say, you know what, I can write some programs in C and I could do more in C because I'm not going to use Rust. Um, you know, those, you know, for me, it's about becoming a more secure, faster, more robust, stable for a long term um, viability uh, play. And it's also about bringing developers in who want to build on this technology and being in an environment that is really fearless about, I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work fine, um, you know, I've got tremendous respect for the research focus of the EVM environment and the, and the community. Um, they are research first, iterate second. Um, I'd say Solana is we're going to research as we go, but we're going to try to build this stuff and see what works. And that's going to be part of our research rather than let's research this out and get it down pat where we start to build. And it's just different. What, you know, one's not better than the other. It's just, it, it's just about fit, what fits you personally. So those are a couple of them. We are about to drop um, a big uh, product from Turbine, which is called Poseidon. Poseidon is a framework that we built and developed um, or rather developed and built in that order um, that allows developers to write Solana programs in TypeScript. 
So this will, you know, this is going to attract a lot of people who don't want to write programs in Rust to to the Solana ecosystem because they come with, you know, TypeScript, JavaScript is the most um, the most used programming language in the world. Um, so giving those people a framework that they can write programs, smart contracts that compile down to the Solana virtual machine, um, you know, that's a pretty big one. So that's, you know, that's just, that's within the next month that will be public. Um, so there is a lot of work. There's also a lot of product. Um, and frankly, there's a lot of projects from other ecosystems coming to Solana. I know that firsthand because, you know, our dev shop is, is doing a lot of those portings from other ecosystems to Solana. So it, it is busy. Um, you know, the other thing I'll, I'll say that I think is important is, you know, I'm a big fan of leadership being a catalyst for the culture. Um, nothing, nothing resonates with me as an individual more than seeing a guy like Tolly being transparent, authentic, and available, and not afraid to engage anybody in the conversation, say, this is who we are, These are this is what makes us great, these are our awards, this is what we need to work on, this is what we're good at, and constantly pushing people to, you know, just make this your own, use it, try to make it better, just that encouragement, and him being in the trenches himself is, is it's just inspiring. I mean, it's the, the leadership in in Solana is um, most resonates with me, and I think that's another big part of it. And obviously, you work very closely with the Solana Foundation, so you are very familiar with his character. That's great to know. Uh, going back to the the tools that you mentioned, a lot of amazing stuff happening from a from a tech perspective. If you had to pick one vertical that you think would benefit most from this, well, obviously we know about meme coins. We are also familiar about. Uh, deepen, but what other vertical do you think would is poised to benefit most from you know this type of tooling that is getting ready to roll out? I mean, look, I think the big three in the short term, and when I say short term, I mean the next five years, which is actually long term in crypto. Um, I, I think um, anything that's trading oriented is going to prefer a fast, cheap, smooth UX. Um, I think gaming is going to benefit tremendously from things like what magic block and you know and what turbo is doing turbo is a a, a game engine um that's rust and that's solana native um and then um and, and dpin um i think dpin works really well just because um you know it's it's requires fast interactive um response and return um you know as far as other things um you know I, I just I hope that there's more stuff coming. Um, you know, I I I, do, I a lot of people don't like how celebrities are getting involved in crypto with some of the meme coin stuff and some of the RWAs and things like that. You know, Scottie Pippen and you know own a piece of the game ball from Game Five. I love that. Any engagement that you can get from people in the spotlight, I think it's good. It's like any, you know. Um, any attention is good attention when you're trying to grow. It just lets people know what's going on. Um, I would say another thing that's happening, um, our CTO is working on it, is uh, native Bitcoin on Solana. That That is very close to being rolled out. Um, and that's a big deal. I mean, people being able to trade and acquire and do things with Bitcoin and, De and DeFi um, at Solana speed and cost is a really big deal. Um, for your native crypto users. But I'm always thinking about the people who aren't here yet. You know, we tell our people in our cohorts, build for the people that aren't here yet, because you don't got to convince the ones who are to, to join. You know, build for people who are not here yet. Amazing. Always, always great alpha. Jeff, I really <laughs> appreciate it. Give us a quick rundown. What are you up to at uh, WBA. So we are, um, and look, we're, we're super busy. So the, the Solana arm of WBA is called Turbine. Um, Turbine.com for our website, except it's not an E, it's a three. So T U R B I N 3.com. Um, we are in our seventh cohort. We had the most applicants, the hardest entry assessment ever by a lot. And we sat 107 cadets, our most ever before this was 61. We have been running um, an advanced builder program that's now in its fourth cohort, and we have the second half of a research and development program for CTOs and senior engineers in Solana. 
Um, and we're now diving into the SBM and Rust in, at a level that, you know, we got 20 guys in there. There's probably not 20 guys working together anywhere in the space that are of that caliber. Um, our innovation lab is busy. I mentioned Facade, and we've shipped tools like Lava and Validate. And then our dev shop is quite busy. Um, our research arm is, is growing. Um, actually, tomorrow, one of our graduates from the research arm is dropping um, – you know, uh, a full report called Solana, how it works. And it basically provides end to end with diagrams explanation for many audiences, exactly how Solana works from the time you log into your wallet until you get finality. So keep an eye out for that. Um, it's going to be hosted in a couple different places. Um, if you check us out at Solana Turbine on Twitter, you will see it drop there. And it's, um, it really, it's, I, I'm incredibly proud because it's the product of our first research cohort um and it's really pretty spectacular i'll be sure to include those links in the description thanks jeff thanks so much for hopping on looking forward to having you on in the near future right, great to see you my friend be well